In today's journey, we're going to show you how to set up the Chief Wiggum's Raspberry Pi Pico Brew server, which is really important if you want to continue to use a Pico Brewer now that Pico Brew has been out of business for years now. And let the fact that they thought that this device needed to be connected to the internet at all times be an indicator of why they failed. We blurred our number, but if yours shows up, feel free to try to use their servers. If it works for you, that's great. Some people are still able to do it, though less and less over time. What's more likely to happen is out of nowhere, you will get server error 7, which happened miraculously for no reason. I thought we were connected to the server. This could happen in the middle of a brew day, and it'll just not know how to finish the rest of brew day without being able to contact the mothership. And that's where the Chief Wiggum's Raspberry Pi server comes in. It's going to be a man in the middle thanks to this Raspberry Pi. And if you've never used one before, don't worry, we're going to talk you through the whole thing. A link's in the description if you want to jump to the good part. We recommend a Raspberry Pi 3 for its convenience factors. It has full HDMI, standard USB, and a reasonable CPU. The Pi 4 trades some of its convenience for a better CPU, but it has two HDMI micro outs instead of standard size HDMI. It's fine, you just be mindful that you probably will need an adapter. And for those trying to get through the cheapest, yes, the Pi Zero will work but it has to be the W version. If it doesn't have Wi-Fi, it won't work. But do remember that you'll need the micro HDMI along with a micro B USB adapter. If you're still confused, we recommend getting a kit from a reputable source. Check the links in the description for an updated list of where we recommend to buy from. But some of the parts that you want to make sure that you get in the kit are an appropriate power supply, a micro SD card if you don't already have one, and a card reader to plug it into your computer. Also, if you don't have one, a USB keyboard to type in a couple lines of code. Don't worry, it's gonna be simple. And finally, you'll want to make sure that you can hook your Pi up to a display. Not full time, but just for setup. And anything like a case or any of the extra stuff, they're nice but not needed. And just as a reminder before we get this ball rolling that all the resources that we're using today can be found at the bbc.net backslash pi. This is mostly a collection of all the lines of code that Phil always needs to use to put any of our pi projects together. Everything in one place so you never have to hunt it down. Even basic things such as get host ID name for finding out the IP address. But she Chief Wiggum's Pico Brew Pi server is what we're after today. And hey, look, there's even a link to this video if you need to reference it later. But for now, click this GitHub link. We're gonna have to speed past giving respects to Pete and the other guys for putting this all together out of love, because what's really important right now is that the text at the top of this block doesn't have to match. What you're really after is these assets down in this dropdown. Now, they may be on a newer version by the time you're installing your server, but you'll want stable to be in the title or Maybe someday it'll just be a finished project and will just be a standardized number. It is important to remember that this is not made by Pico Brew themselves, but some people that just love their systems and didn't want them to be dead when Pico Brew went out of business. But luckily, there is a very strong community, and if you're not a member of the Pico Brewers Facebook group and own a Pico Brew, you're kind of missing out on half of the experience. Alright, with the image downloaded, all we need now is a way to flash it to the SD card. If you don't have one already, Belina Etcher is the one we recommend because it works for Mac, PC, and everything that we've ever needed it before. But we're not gonna cover the basics, so what we're gonna do now is go to the download folder and unzip the image file that we previously downloaded. We are gonna fast forward through some of these slow parts, but the only file we need to make sure that we get is the image file. It should be the only file in there. All right, that's one of the easy parts. The next easy part is open up Etcher, click on Flash from File. This is going to let us pick the file that we just unzipped in the downloads folder. Now is a good time to make sure that the SD card that you want to format for your Raspberry Pi is inserted in your computer and that that's the one you selected here. Selecting the wrong drive could lead to permanent data loss. Now the way we captured unfortunately didn't get the message, but if you get an error or prompted to approve the operating system to do what you're trying to do, you will need to click OK or Yes. This is writing all of the files to the SD card that we need for it to just 
automatically installed the Raspberry Pi operating system along with the Chief Wiggum's Raspberry Pi server. So it's a bit of a two-in-one here that we're doing right now. We're going to fast forward through this part, but what you should be doing right now is double checking that you have a 2.5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network that you can hook this up to. If it's a dual band network, the Raspberry Pi is going to get confused and you're not going to have a great time because it's going to have trouble connecting to both the Pico Brew and the web client at the same time. This led to us for a weekend of despair, but eventually we just turned off the 5 gigahertz network on our router and that fixed the problem. What you can also do is use the guest network, as those are usually only 2.4 by default. If you run into some trouble, do try reinstalling the Raspberry Pi image to the SD card from a fresh start because sometimes there's just a few hiccups in the install. Check the description for more troubleshooting help, or leave a comment if you're still left in the dark. But alright, if everything's going good, we don't need to flash another one just yet, so we can close out of that. If you see this message, hit cancel. You don't want to format what we just did. And then what we're going to want to do is unplug and then replug in the USB drive. You're going to see that message again. Again, do not format the disk at this point. Hit cancel. All right, now this doesn't matter if you're on Mac or PC. There will probably be two different drives that show up. If you hit the wrong one, your computer will complain. Again, just ignore it. Hit cancel. You want to click on the boot one. This is a pile of executables and other files and data that the Pi is going to need to set up its actual OS. Now, for the most part, we can ignore most of these files, but there is one we want to edit. That is WPA supplicant.config. It sounds complicated and nerdy, but just right click and open with either a notepad in Windows or text editor in Apple land. If you're using Linux, then you, you already know what to do. Worst case scenario, there are some command lines that you can type into the terminal once we have everything set up already on the Pi. However, this is the recommended way to do that as we only need to change a couple of things in here. We're going to replace your Wi-Fi name with the name of your Wi-Fi. In this case, it's Tank Tank. Remember, it's case sensitive. So whatever yours is, whatever the name that shows up when you try to connect your phone to your home Wi-Fi, that's what you enter. And now here's where you enter the password. The only thing you want to make sure that you don't leave any extra spaces or put anything outside of those quotation marks as that will ruin the coding. Make sure you, you save before you close out. And now we're ready to insert this SD card into the Pi. Once you turn it on, it'll start doing everything automatically at this point. We're going to fast forward through some of this install stuff, but it took about a minute for it to install on our Raspberry Pi B+. Install times may vary, especially if you use a Pi Zero. And just a heads up, we're going to see some error messages coming up. Don't freak out about them, they're completely normal. Also, the Pi will restart a few times, so if the screen goes black, don't freak out. Also, don't be in a huge hurry. The first time you see the uh, login like this show up, don't do it because it's going to do that. It's going to install a couple things and you don't want to interfere with it. All right, so now that we see that everything's installed and everything's going good, what we want to do is log in. Default is PI, P-I, password raspberry, all lowercase. You're not going to see you type your own password in. It's just how it does it. And the most important thing we're going to do right now is what it says to do on the screen. We want to change that password. So we're going to type in... P-A-S-S-W-D, and now we're going to write in the current password, which is still Raspberry, and now put in a real password, because IoT devices are a huge security threat and definitely change the password. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, uh, I'm going to guess your phone is full of malware. But, you know, one trick we can do here is if we still need the IP address, if we miss it from above, type in hostname minus capital I, and we'll be presented with all the IP addresses associated with this Pi on the network. The last thing we like to do is type in sudo reboot now. This will reboot the Pi now and allow any updates to come through. We'll fast forward through this part. Now, if you just downloaded the image, there's probably not a lot of updates to come through, but we like to say that a system isn't completely set up until it survives its first reboot, because that's computer science. All right, that actually finishes up what we need to actually do on the Pi, so let's hop back over to the Pico Brew itself. If you've already joined another network, you'll have to enter the diagnostics by pressing the button when the Pico C shows up. Click Troubleshoot Wi-Fi, Setup Connection, Choose the network that we want to connect to, 
which will actually be PicoBrew. We can change that later, but currently the default password is PicoBrew, all capital. We'll fast forward through Phil typing it in, because the knob can be a little finicky. But also, he's doing it upside down and backwards. If you're having problems here, it's probably that 2.4 or 5 gigahertz bandwidth issue, so double check your router settings. But once it's connected, what we need to do is restart the Pico Brew. And what we're going to do is run into one of those errors that we don't need to freak out about. So once it's connected, it's going to try to update its firmware. And, you know, the server doesn't know what model it is yet. And if you're watching on the Pi's monitor output, you'll notice that it's got an error. Cannot fetch firmware. Configuration of the device type via device UX is required. Basically, we need to finish off the handshake between the Pi and the Pico Brew. But what you want to do is try to do it twice. Because we ran into a bit of an issue where it would only try to do this once per install. It's probably a problem with our Pi, but you should see a new error line every time you try and fail an update. If you also run into this problem, just reflash your SD card and restart the process. Because the Pico Brew is already connected to the network, it won't be a problem this time. As long as when you type Type in that IP address into your favorite internet browser, you get a machine number, you're good to move forward. That's all we need to finish the handshake. So go over to System, Devices, Add New Device, specify what model you have. We have a C. Either use copy paste or type out the machine product ID number into the field. And then give it an alias. This is the name that'll show up on the uh, homepage. Very important. Next part, hit save. If you don't, it's not going to remember any of this stuff. So now, when we go back to the home page, that number is replaced with the name we gave it, and that completes the handshake. So now that when we try to update the Pico Brewer again, the server will know which firmware to actually send, as sending the wrong firmware could damage your machine. And no, we didn't actually speed that up. That's actually how quickly the update goes on the Pico C. Once it's restarted, you set it up like it's a brand new machine, because at this point, it is. So you go through the generic setup questions, you know, language what units you want, and voila, we're basically there. Whenever you turn on the Pi when connected to the Pico Brew network, it will think it's talking to the mothership. It will push any updates, it will give the recipes, it will... Ah, <sighs> make it act like how it should have in the first place. Not being able to program a recipe on site with the Pico Brew, no internet, that was one of the biggest nails in its coffin. We'll get into the other two later. But you're probably saying, but Phil, when I try to do a Pico pack, it just gives me an error. That's because there's one last thing we have to do, and that's supply the recipe data. So now go back to your web browser, and you can see in the upper right corner, the recipes are split up by style of model, with C, S, and Pro all being glumped together under Pico. What we'll need to do is create a new recipe. doesn't need to have anything specific. We'll just give it some generic information right here. We're just gonna speed through because this video is already getting long enough. Plus you probably already know how designing a recipe works. The only thing you wanna make sure you don't do here is mess with the first three steps if you're using a Pico Brew. The last thing we need to make sure that we do is actually push the recipe up. So click that green button right there a couple of times just to make me feel safe, and then it should show up when you go back over to the Pico Brew itself. We wish a default recipe was included, but hey, we got there in the end anyways. So now we're ready to start the brew. Now you will want to make sure that you've done any first rinses or cleaning processes before using your first brew, but we want to just see that it works. And boom, there it is. Pico Brew, bought in 2022, still works thanks to the love and support of its community. If you have any problems, just leave us a comment below or check out the Facebook community, Pico Brewers. And of course, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as a final note, if you don't love automated homebrewing, then just don't be a jerk about it. Like, some people do different things.